Steve Dace, Michigan podcast, uh, breaking down the Wolverines. Uh, we'll focus to your opponent, uh, broad scale, big picture, not the nuts and bolts of Illinois. You should be safe on the road, even though they took Nebraska to a pretty good game in the final minute, 42-38. Your thoughts about Lovey Smith. It's been a program that's been as more abundant as any of the um, existing programs in the Big Ten. We'll take out Rutgers. Uh, uh, over the past decade since getting to a Rose Bowl with Juice Williams and Ron Zook in 2007. They've not poured the facilities, the money into the equation like the Minnesotas and Northwesterns have. And uh, it certainly doesn't appear as though anything's going to change soon. I think you said it all there. And <clears throat> I, I'm not, you know, when Lovey Smith was hired, I, I said at the time um, that that could be very successful if he truly wants to be a college coach, meaning does he truly want to recruit 24 seven? And, you know, and I know he's a high character guy, but it, you know, there's mentoring young men and then there's mentoring kids. Okay. You know, it's, you know, it, it's a little bit like when you're a grandpa and right now he looks, he kind of looks like black Santa with the beard. Okay. So it, it's, you know, there's a reason everybody loves being grandparents because when the kids get unruly, you send them back home. All right. And you're mentoring young men in the NFL who are maybe new husbands, new fathers, but there's some baseline of maturity there. Most of the time here, you're a surrogate father figure. And, even, you know, and, and, and you're not even having to do that for all 53 guys in the NFL, maybe for a dozen of them, maybe less because you're only coaching one side of the ball as a defensive coordinator here at, on the college level. You're doing that. For the, for the vast majority of the 85 scholarship players you have as the head coach. And so do you really have a passion for that? And I think what you've seen with the fact that recruiting never really took off is he just doesn't have the passion to be a college football coach. I think the problem that Illinois has now, though, is he's not really leaving anything behind for a successor to build on from here. And you can tell by the over-reliance on how they had to use the transfer portal just to put a competent roster together for this season. So I think it's pretty obvious that, um, you know, we're closer to the end than the beginning here. Uh, from a Michigan perspective, you have the 128th ranked running game in America. And Illinois has given up over 300 yards rushing in its last two games. And if you cannot run the football effectively on some level here, fire everybody Sunday morning. Everybody. And speaking of transfers and uh, building a football program or a team, at least to one roster for 2019, uh, you run into your old friend, uh, Brandon Peters, who would want to if, he if, if he's healthy. I, I don't know if they, if they made it. I know he left the game on Saturday, didn't come back and they weren't in that game. That might've been the reason why. Um, but, uh, you know, so I don't know what the injury was. They're saying it's an upper body injury. I don't know anything more about that. Have you heard an update about that? I don't, I don't know. I have not. 